Hello everyone, this is Audrey. I wanted to drop a little tip video today about the Generative AI Builder. I don't know how many people are aware, but there is an embedded Copilot inside of Copilot Studio to help you build your Copilots. And I've been pretty impressed at how these builder features can take a, a Copilot from possibly taking months to author to days, even hours or minutes. And so you see the things that I've highlighted here on the left here. These are things that I really fell in love with. I'm like, oh, wow, this is truly saving me time. I was especially impressed by the adaptive card generation. So I wanted to show you these things live just in a brief demo. So I'm going to flip over to my copilot that I have. And I have a construction progress copilot. This is a copilot that is used to uh, interact with contractors from a website. So imagine that the program owner, maybe they're building a dam, a bridge, or a tunnel or something, and the owner wants to give the contractors the ability to interact with them even though they don't have access to the tenant. So the contractors can access this through this co-pilot for them related to construction progress. The scenario I have chosen today is the potential change order. I think I've talked to you about these before. In construction, a potential change order is where you ask for some type of change to your contract. Could mean you need more money, could mean you need more time, and it could mean you need less of either of those. So. Let's say I'm pretty new to Copilot Studio. Let's imagine that. And I want to create the thing that would be triggered, the topic that will be triggered when someone asks to submit a potential change order. So I'm going to use the embedded Copilot. And so I can create a topic from blank, but then I gotta do all those steps by myself. And I would love to take a day and kind of compare how long it takes to do it from blank versus how to do it from a description because this is a time saver, all right? Look for those little twinkling icons. That means it's for you, the maker. These are, these. are This embedded copilot does not serve the consumer any purpose, all right? So I'm gonna click on that, and I've, I've done potential change orders before, so I will just select that as the title. And then I have to just define this. Now, you can type whatever you want under the name of the topic. I just had a little time saver because I've already typed it before, so it, it, it gave me some autofill, which it will do for you, too. It remembers what you typed the most, and it will help you even select the name. But I'm going to call it Potential Change Order. I'm going to say, let a user request a potential change order <clears throat> by collecting the following information and I notice I hit tab when I saw the word information again that's autofill happening right there live on the screen another thing that helps me right what do I need for a change order I need a contract number I need a cost value and I need a reason for the change <coughs> all right that's basically what I need to collect in order to allow someone to submit a potential change order all right, I'm going to click create. And the copilot's going to get busy building for me because this is a build feature. And you'll notice up above it says the topic was created with AI. Before adding this topic, make sure all the content is appropriate and accurate. Okay, so that's just a little reminder. The edit with copilot panel has been opened just to remind me of its presence because I can continue to iterate on this, right? Like add another question and stuff like that. But I'm actually going to close it and let you look at all the triggers it put in there for me. So it kind of helped me to figure out what might people say. Now I can edit these. Like for instance, I want to add PCO, which is common for people to call potential change orders PCOs. And then some people may even call it a CO, a change order. But no potential change order is actually a change order because that's an approved PCO until it goes through an approval process but because I know they might say that I'm gonna add that now I don't like this idea of putting change specifications because I never want a contractor to think they can do that 
So anything I don't like, I can delete. So you can edit the trigger, which helps like kind of define the intent, right? Okay, so now we've got all that done by our copilot. We added to it by putting in the abbreviations and then it asked those questions and it used the right things for what we've asked for. I really like that it used number here because that way I could use that in calculations and such, all right? And so at the end, it puts in, thank you for providing your information. And it actually populated a nice little message summarizing what happened. So I'm going to save. And what I mean by what happened, happened is what did the user say to those questions? It summarizes those using the variables. So here I'm just going to type PCO. And I'm going to put in my little fake contract number. I might in real life use entities to help make sure that we don't get any submissions to contracts that don't exist. Um, the cost value here might be $14,000. Okay, let's let's be aggressive. What's the reason? $14,000, what could that be? Uh, we needed to uh, change the design of the bridge to support larger truck weights. Okay, so this is kind of like a serious thing. Sometimes I'll take my prompts and I'll put them in a, uh, a note or something that I could reuse over and over and over and over again. Um, so I might just open up Notepad and put them in there. So just FYI, it's something that you could do. Um, if you're like testing a bunch of prompts, you could just put them in notepad and then reuse them over and over again because I don't want to type that a hundred times. Um, but I do like to test with real, like real kind of information. So that it really works against what would typically be written. So here, all of that is just side tip, right? Here you see that it's, it's thanked them for the information and it summarized it here. All right. And at this point, I could revise this message any way I'd like to make it look the way I want to look. Now, one thing I would suggest in this scenarios is that if this information is going to be reused, like for instance, now that we have these variables collected, we could submit this to a, dataver a dataverse table so that this could be followed up with via a BPF, or we could submit it to Power Automate as uh, the start of an approval process for this change order. And then we could have conditions in that approval process that says if it's less than $1,000, do this. If it's more than this, you could do that. So we have the capability of optimizing the entire experience, not just for the consumer of the bot, but of everybody behind the scenes that has to make sure that things are followed up on properly. All right? But this works beautifully. But just to show you one more thing, because I think it's really awesome, is... I can choose to use an adaptive card for this. And this means I can customize my adaptive cards to look the way I want them to look. But the, and adding an adaptive card instead of a message is very easy because it's one of the choices here, ask with an adaptive card. So I could make my own adaptive card because when I add like this, you're gonna get a blank card. The JSON is blank. So I'm gonna do something better than that, right? I'm actually going to use an adaptive card for this message, but I'm not going to write the card JSON. Watch. First, I'm going to copy this. Now, this is something I like to do whenever I'm going to delete something because I'm going to do a different way. If I think I might go back to doing it this way, I'll highlight it. You can see it's highlighted. If you open up Edit with Copilot, it'll tell you how many nodes you have selected, right? I want that one node, so I'm going to cut it. I could also copy it and then delete it later, but I'm going to cut it and then I'm going to save and then I'm going to go to one of my topics that's turned off and I sometimes I'll use lesson one because I turn all those lessons off, right? And when I click on the plus sign, it'll give me paste because I've just copied and then I will paste that there and I might actually put a comment here, right? New comment. Uh, this is an option for reviewing answers for PCOs, okay? Because I might come back to that one day, so I got it handy. 
neither the comment nor this node will ever show up to an end user because um, the, the comments are internal to the maker and the topic is turned off, right? It's off, all right? So now I'm gonna go back to potential change order and I'm gonna show you how cool and easy it is to add an adaptive card with the Copilot, right? So I'm gonna open up the Edit and Copilot panel and I'm gonna make sure no nodes are selected because I actually want this to occur right after the last question that it asks, okay? And I could hit that plus sign if I want to, but that's where I want it to be. And then if you notice on the Edit with Copilot panel, it will give you some ideas of what you can do. And I will give you a link in the description of all the other things you can do. Now I'm going to click Summarize the information gathered from the user in Adaptive Card. That's exactly what I want. All right, so that it pops that example up into my prompt because this is where I type the prompt. And by the way, I can edit it here. It's just saving me time in typing that. And then I click update. And I wait a couple of seconds. Now, normally in the past, I might go to adaptivecards.io and try building a card, or I might uh, go to um, Bing Chat or Copilot for Enterprise, and I might say, please create me a card that, that summarizes information such as blah, blah, blah. Those are all ways to get adaptive card code, but the Copilot just wrote it for me. Now, I'm sure that you're probably a little worried by the red text that you see here. I'm gonna click on media here because this icon kind of means either dynamic or something's preventing a preview, right? So if I click on that, you can see the information and you can scroll down and see that it throws three errors. Well, it, show, it throws five errors by default. Uh, I believe this is a bug that will be resolved, but because I want you to be able to use this right away, I'm gonna show you how you can resolve it in just a couple of seconds yourself. The reason this is happening, that this error is coming up, is because the Copilot left you in edit formula mode. Okay, there are two modes here. There's edit JSON and edit formula. Now, if I switch to JSON, you're gonna see, I'm gonna control A and then control C to copy this text. And I might drop it in a, in a notepad or something because I, I don't wanna lose this text because you'll notice that when I switch to JSON and say continue, it completely wipes out my beautiful adaptive card that the Copilot made for me. So. I ain't got no problems because I copied it, so now I can just paste that instead of that text that's there. And if you noticed how fast I moved here, I hit the expand so I can see the whole thing. It is going to be shown in one single string. So this is optional, but I like to right click and choose format document. And what this does is it puts it in proper format so that I can read this, all right? And this is proper JSON format. So you'll see there's no further errors on this panel. And I've got a preview here of what this adaptive card is gonna look like. So I might say, please review your responses below. Now, here's the interesting thing though. This is a placeholder text. This is not dynamic formulas, which we need there. And so there's one more thing you have to do so that this is not just showing a function and instead it will show the answers that they gave in the conversation, all right? The Copilot doesn't write Formula FX for you today. No Power FX written by the Copilot um, in this case, right? And as of today, February, 2024, so there's one more thing you have to do. You just need to fix those formulas. Now, this JSON, however, it has some uh, formatting that doesn't align with formulas. And basically, to drill it down to the simplest, and I'll add a document below so you can read that and see this in more detail, it's these quotes around the keys that it doesn't like. Those quotes that are around each key before the colon. So. Here's the good news. Now that the JSON is accurate, you can just, no copy needed, swap over to formula. 
and when you swap over the formula there will be no errors okay life is good but it's not finished because like I said we've got to convert these three values and if you had more how many however many answers you have less or more we have to convert them to formulas now it kind of helps you because it does give you an accurate formula formula so if I just take out these quotes that formula is accurate I'm going to expand so that you can see better and you want to take your time with this because it is really easy to accidentally delete something you need like I did all right so be careful you only want to delete the quotes around that formula that they give you by default and that is an accurate function by the way if I just take if the test if this is a function I can just backspace and type a dot and you'll see the the IntelliSense happening this tells you okay now this is a dynamic formula the only last thing I might do is remove the wrapper of the text function because it's not needed. Now, if that was a field that was a choice, right, then you might need to wrap that in a text function. But I know that all of these are just simple strings, right? I just took whatever the user typed, right? So I don't need the text formula to be wrapped around this. But you'll know when you need that. And if you have doubts, you can leave it. It's not going to hurt anything. All right? So now I'm just going to look and see. Everything looks great now. So I'm going to save this. And then it says topic saved. And now let's try it again. So this time I'm going to be bad and say request CO. Because we have that in our triggers, right? It's going to understand that one, they want a PCO right because they cannot request an approved change order right so now we we'll put the contract number in again I might use entities for that to protect us then the cost value here this is the cost of what I need to spend and maybe um, this time I we need to sorry we need to replace the fencing around zone two due to the storm last week okay so they're gonna need twenty four hundred dollars to replace that fence and bam there are the answers exactly how the customer asked for them so at this point i can add a note here that asks for confirmation are those values correct if they are i can go ahead and add nodes for connecting to the connector for dataverse or adding a flow or whatever I need to do with that data or I can say no if they say no I can just restart the process and get the the answers corrected so super time saver I don't think I've seen anything write adaptive card code for me except this and I'm just pretty amazed by that maybe the only exception is the power apps adaptive cards right but just having something write the, the code for you just blows my mind. I hope it helps you as you build your own co-pilots. And I'll be talking to you soon. I'll keep looking for tips to share. You have a great rest of your day.